we headed to the mythical Wangi National Park, once home of the most famous African lion, Cecil. And who better to show us the park than someone who knows it very well, an old friend, a friend who sold, I mean. Ahí viene el estúpido. <laughs> Huangi is the biggest national park in Zimbabwe and one of the best safari destinations in the world. It has all the wild animals you can see in the country, has about half of the elephant population with about 50,000 of them roaming in the park. Unfortunately, most of the wildlife population of Zimbabwe have been pushed to the border and one of the reasons there's so many animals in Huangi is that they can freely migrate into the neighboring country, Botswana. Huangi is indeed a paradise, but a paradise that is surrounded on the Zimbabwean side by mines, hunting concessions, and farmlands that make the migration of animals inland into Zimbabwe a very risky <laughs> endeavor. A special thing about Huangi is its satellite campsites that are situated deep inside the reserve in prime game viewing areas. They accommodate just one group of people and the facilities are always taken care of by one person that is always there and even make the fire for you every night. We stayed at the most famous one, Ngueshla, once territory held by some of the most famous lions of the continent, like Bubesi, who often was seen fighting with Jericho and the famous Cecil, even in and around the campsite, like Bush and Sanda. Almost all of these lions, probably all of them, were lured by hunters just outside the borders of the park with carcasses and then killed. In Weshla, once the kingdom of these legendary lions gave us the most beautiful sunsets we have ever seen. Next day, we went out of the park to visit one of the most successful conservancy NGOs in the country, one dealing with wild dogs, the favorite animal of the family. Wild dog conservation. Inside the education halls, the kids were eager to learn, but as there was nothing about lions, Roberto fell asleep. Given that it has been impossible to successfully breed wild dogs in captivity, they are one of the most critically endangered species in the continent. And there's a lot of support needed if this species is going to survive the coming decades. So her name is called Lucky, and then she survived a lion attack. So she's not going back in the bush. She's going to stay here permanently because of the injury she has on her neck. The, the wild dogs are very social. Is she, is she not just super unhappy alone? Yeah, she's a nephew. Yeah. Yeah, she's a nephew. So she lost a friend 28, 28 November last year. She was bitten by snake. So since you know, 28 November to today, she's been on her own. And these are social animals. So stress, boredom oh can actually kill a dog. If, if she's like, just like a name, then you get an injured dog. Mm -hmm. Then we just introduce that dog. So if we don't, if we don't get any, so which means we have, we have to keep on playing games with the show. So don't think much about the partner. We won't survive in the world, so that's why we just keep it away. But but if the animals doing always the same round, yeah, it's a that is the only sign that they are burned in the brain. So we suspect maybe during the attack she did brain damage. Mm -hmm. Oh, because she, she was has, already, she was doing that since the beginning. Since the beginning, yeah. So she has been doing that touch the pandemic like, because she can spend the whole day running around like this. So, and nowadays, because there are few left in the world, it's quite difficult to see them in the world. So that's why I just keep this dog here so that if people come here that they've never seen dogs before, you can yes. actually show them the stuff. Yes, yes. So that's the main reason why this dog is. Lucky, lucky, Haita. Lucky, yeah. Ik weet het gewoon dat hij lucky is geweest dat hij nog leeft. Ja, als het lucky is dat ze nou hier zit. Oh, dat is maar. Schatje.
at Kennedy Camp, we met an anti-poaching guard. Yes, there's a lot there. Yeah, you find a lot of poachers? Yeah, plenty plus. Plenty plus? Ah, plenty. Yeah. But in case of the case, if you shop, you shop to kill. Yes. Are you allowed in Botswana, in Zimbabwe, to shoot to yes. kill? Yes. Yes. Like in Botswana? Yeah, like in Botswana. There are still many lions in Huangi, most of them migrating from the Botswana Kalahari. Sadly, when a lion is near the border of the park or is known to have crossed it, trophy hunters would immediately label them as problem lions and would start lobbying for them to be trophy hunted. No wonder, it can cost up to $100,000 to kill one male lion, so it's a very profitable business for these corporations. These are Humba and Ensai, two majestic brothers that since 2021 have been labeled as problem lions by the hunting corporations <laughs> that want to profit from killing them. Our time at Wangi was up, so we started driving towards the Pandamatenga border with Botswana, crossing the park from south to north. My friend, please help us. Yeah. We moved in the morning from Gweshla. What are you looking for? We look for Impala. <coughs> Just Impala? Just Impala. No lions, no li uh, no nothing. Impala. These are the Impalas. Where? Ah, Motherfuck! <laughs> the Impala! Thank you! <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> we look okay, for so lions. Okay, so we're for lions. For so lions. From... Te pagan la solar panel. Nunca la había pensado tú, ¿no? De ver esa mierda. Su puta right. Conserving wildlife. Thank you, Mark Bristow. Se llaman, se llaman conserving wildlife. The... You, Mark Bristol. The main difference between the poachers our friend at Kennedy campsite shoots at and the trophy hunters is that the latter are wealthy, foreign and mostly white people who pay a lot of money to kill animals just for fun, while the poachers are poor black Africans trying to eat and make a living. Sadly, there seems to be no other way for people around these areas to profit from their wildlife. We drove tens of kilometers bordering the infamous coal mines run by Chinese corporations just outside the national park. Even though we were outside the mines, the soil was completely black. There were mountains of coal and breathing the air was almost unbearable. Smell, man. Ah, this is, this is really not... Ah, what the hell? Will these corporations eventually turn Huangi into this? Later, we picked up two hitchhikers. Two ladies that after going to trade maize for milk, were going back to their village in one of the most important hunting areas in the world, the Matetsi Concession. We learned that the Zimbabwean population do not profit from trophy hunting. Breakfast camp. Yes. And these are uh, for uh, hunters. Yes, they are for hunters. Why did he work? Your husband. He went to be lawyer. Matesi? Yes. And he was doing what? He was walking around if he would come to the company. Okay. So that so that people from the village don't kill the animals, yes. but also let them know that there were animals there, so people that with millions of dollars come here. Yes. And when did the did your husband stop working for? Have lions uh, killed people here? No. When was the last time you remember or you know a lion uh, killed a uh, cattle or a uh, animal? Uh, and then he was killed, the lion. Yes, I But you're not allowed to kill the lion. Yes, we It was a pleasure to help you. I I hope, I hope one day. 
you have a nice uh, Life. way of, of living. Oh, thank you very much. Same to you. May God bless you. Bless your family. We were late for crossing the Pandamatenga border, so we had to rally through Matetsi. We are in the people area where 12 yachts come to shoot lions. And you may drive the road, but you are not allowed to go outside from the car or to leave the mine road, just for the hunter. And as we heard from the hitchhiker, this um, lodges, hunting lodges, they abuse the people that live around and uh, they don't pay them. All the money goes out and the Zimbabweans get screwed. They are not allowed to shoot, to kill uh, animals, these villagers. They have to report it to the rangers, the rangers report it to these people uh, that have their lodges here and then uh, well, the uh, fly directly from the US or from Spain or whatever, they get here and uh, they uh, pay a shitload of money to kill this animal and this money doesn't go to the people living here. What the people get is some meat from the elephant, just that, but the money is only for the, for the hunting company. We did it! The Pandamatenga border lies in the Matetsi hunting area. As such, many of the wealthiest in the world have crossed here, trying to grow their egos and bringing a trophy back home to brag to their acquaintances. As the border was closed, we had to sleep there and see for ourselves the reality. This border was built in the 1970s and hasn't been renovated since. This border was built by the Rhodesian government, not by Zimbabwe. How come that some of the wealthiest men in the world crossed through this border, paid tens of thousands of dollars to kill an animal? and that there is no scent from that coming to these buildings or to the people that works here. If it pays, it stays, they say. But who's getting paid? Not the Zimbabweans, native to these wildlife areas, nor the government workers of the Pandamatenga border. Mines, hunting concessions, farmland. Wangi is a paradise for wildlife, a paradise surrounded by hell, a paradise in peril. Mm -hmm.